Hey everyone, um, this is a uh, project that I started working on a few months ago, a small company with um, uh, about three developers working on it. I started off being the only person working on this, uh, and this is basically mostly stuff I, I did myself. Um, what you're looking at here, you need to pretend that you're in a restaurant, and the stuff on the left uh, is um, a tablet that's given to customers. Uh, a, the stuff on the right is two separate tablets, both held by waiters. Um, and uh, the restaurant will remain nameless because I'm mostly certain that this talk is a violation of my non-disclosure agreement. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so basically this is about enabling real-time communication between uh, customers and staff. I'm just going to log in on the customer tablet <coughs> using highly secure passwords and as one member of staff here and a separate member of staff. Oops, password. And now it's secure. Okay, so um, uh, right now, the, um, so this system is all about basically real-time uh, communication and tablets. Right now, you're seeing the tablet lock screen. It hasn't been given to a, um, a, a, a customer, but it's device one. So I'm going to say this guy's sitting on table five and add device one. So now this thing has sprung into action. You're looking at the, um, uh, at the menu there. The idea is that you can build up a list of items. All this is being done on the server side. Uh, send the order. Uh, OK, card payment's not going to work, so I don't have a, have, have a card machine. But um, uh, yeah, exactly. See, I don't have a card machine. Uh, we actually got card payment working with, 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 with this through Meteor. It was, um, uh, it was quite cool. Um, so uh, I'm going to show what happens when a staff member. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is actually using the the mock backend. So after the second attempt to go through, it's actually pretending that the card payments worked. So uh, what you're seeing here is this fellow here has now got um, a uh, order of uh, of stuff come through. So we can process this order. This uh, you've got two different waiters looking at the um, uh, at the screen here, and one of them decides that he's going to accept the order and starts working on it. So the customer tablet gets locked, so, so they can't um, I use it, or it ought to. There's a bug there, uh, and this member of staff can't um, I, I can't currently access this. So it's marked completed. Um, that would be. Uh, these guys can start um, can put in their own orders. So um, add some more stuff, and it's all. The other staff tablets are all being responsive, so this, this guy can't start an order while the other guy is, um, uh, is working on it. That's basically all the functionality that I'm trying to um, uh, go for at the moment. I, I hope that's not completely um, uh, in incomprehensible. Uh, but just before I've mentioned a couple of things about you know, what we, why we use Meteor for this. Uh, I mean, hope, hopefully it's pretty obvious why we use Meteor for this. Uh, it basically, this started life as a prototype application, and this is the kind of thing that is you know, thousands of lines of code and message buses and stuff like that in other systems, and it basically started life as a single <coughs> file. Yeah, if uh, meteor dot is server this, if meteor dot is client that, and it kind of grew into a prototype where you start adding in these these features, just thinking, okay, how is this interaction going to work? We we're so happy with how meteor worked, but actually it ended up being the production technology that we used to implement it. So that's my my uh, first take home from this is that. Um, Pretending that something is a prototype, even if you'd like to use Meteor in production, is a really good way to sneak something past your chief technology officer. Uh, <laughs> and then when the business guys get so happy with like, you know, uh, a kind of 20-minute like turnaround on adding some new button that does something with communication between two different tablets, then, uh, then that kind of like backs the CTO into a corner where now he has to approve the technology. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, you feel free to use that one. Uh, <laughs> Oh, crap. <laughs> Are there any other CTO? Is my CTO in here? <laughs> uh, then um, he seemed to be quite happy with it in, in, in the other room. The other um, uh, uh, thing I'd, uh, I, I'd mention is there's one kind of big aha moment that we had in the building of this, uh, of this project, which I thought I'd share because I think it's quite a nice little meteor thing, which is that everyone kind of knows that, uh, that if you're building an app with a front end and a back end, uh, that you separate your front end data model and your back end data model so that you don't get them, uh, so that you can change them in independently and you don't have um, uh, front end components that really depend heavily on the exact structure of a back end data model. 
And one of the criticisms I've heard of Meteor is that you end up binding your front-end components to the back-end um, uh, data model. And what we ended up doing with this is we've actually got three data models. So we've got the, the client-side state in the browser, and then we've got the Meteor MongoDB database, which we call the, um, the, uh, the operations database. And that basically only handles the state of all of the UIs right now in the restaurant at this moment. It doesn't, for example, have any archive of orders that happened yesterday or, or anything that's not required to serve the current customers who are in the restaurant right now. Then we have a third backend system that's much more traditional. It's based on SQL. It's a more kind of gold um, uh, database. And the idea is that so um, it doesn't matter that MongoDB is non-transactional. You can basically just delete the database and regenerate it from SQL side. It doesn't have loads of information. So we actually don't use um, complicated Meteor subscriptions. We just basically bind to whole tables because there's not that much database. It doesn't overwhelm the, um, the clients. And this architecture of having, of basically considering the MongoDB database that Meteor gives you not to be your main backend database, but like uh, a session store has worked really well for us. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Any questions?